Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Today we have something very, very exciting in store. At least it's very exciting for me, because we are warping ground to get Jewel into the correct position. Yes, indeed, you guessed it. We are going to reattempt our lathe video. And we're going to do it in the exact same way, just to prove it could be done, or it can be done. In fact, it certainly could be done. This is the new ship we're going to be using. Planet Voyager Mark II, or whatever I call this, I can't actually remember. Basically, the Shoot for the Moon video, the Shoot for the Moon ship that I've been using in videos across the board, it's based on that design, whereas we've got tanks of, air, well, stacks of aerospike engines, nine aerospike engines, with flims of similar shape, except as you work your way up, you have an extra layer of tanks in the launch stage the launch stage being the one that we just ejected, and instead of vectoring engines for transfer to the moon, we now have nuclear engines. Surprisingly, and I kind of underestimated the efficiency of these engines, actually quite surprisingly, nuclear engines can get you to any of the planets, not sure about Moho, but certainly Jewel, it can get you to any of the planets with only two tanks of fuel between them, that's for three engines. So the system works. We can carry on with our shoot for the shoot for the moon design. This time, shoot for the planet. I'm christening my ship. So this video is at four times speed, and the game is actually currently playing at four times speed, as you can see up there in the top left-hand corner, which means we are recording this at sixteen times speed, which is pretty awesome. There we go, burning, and we get our encounter. That's good. <laughs> Quite obvious, that's good. And we actually have a lot of fuel left. By a lot, I mean we have enough. So let's swap out to our second shoot from the planet, which is our return craft. Now, we have a mod. Yes. Ooh, those pesky little things. We have this mod. And if you can see up there, the return stage, where Lander would be sitting, uh, has two command modules. If you click on the annotation on the screen right now, you can go and see my tutorial on how to make an extra command module. I don't have MechJeb installed. This is just an empty command module that we're using to return Bill Kerman, who I think is our pilot. Should be Bill. We're using to get Bill safely home. That's it. Detach that launch stage. Go onto our atomic stage. And once again, we can burn for a dual intercept. Nice and easy. So yeah, instead of how in our, in our last slave video, we took a three man and we had two pilots rescuing the one pilot, which seems like a bit of a waste of mass. So we're just having the one pilot rescuing the one pilot. So they're both in solitary ships and they're only three days behind each other as we increase our speed to get up to uh, the altitude of Joule. We'll actually see that they encounter each other about three days on either side. Is it 3 or is it 30? Some factor of that. So yeah, warping around, we get there. Turns out the return vehicle actually gets here first, so we're using this now. Just going to aerobrake with Jewel, doing some adjustments of course. Aerobraking in Jewel is one of the hardest things, because the atmosphere gets so thick so quickly that uh, it's really very hard to, to get the precise point. Let's just say I did a lot of quick loading and quick saving. There we actually have a Tylo encounter. Now what I would have pre preferred, and this would have saved so much more fuel, but it doesn't matter because the ship's got tons of fuel anyway, unlike our last design, I would have preferred if we got a lathe encounter on the way here, uh, so we could actually aerobrake on lathe. That would be much more convenient. We could go straight into a lathe orbit. But alas, it wasn't so, and we end up getting into this hyperbolic orbit going around a few times until we manage to adjust and get a lathe encounter. So we're actually just aerobraking again, decreasing our uh, altitude to get two lathe specs. Here's the green atmosphere. Love that horizon. The beautiful green. Goes so well with their skin tone, you know? And there we go. That we have our lathe encounter. And we should be able to bring it down just enough that we actually miss it. Uh, but that's okay. Once we get out of the atmosphere, we can actually just uh, burn a bit more and get an encounter there. It's actually probably because of our inclination. If you can see, it gets it's not perfectly equatorial. So if we warp to the correct point, then we shouldn't waste too much fuel, just changing that. 
burning south because we are on our way northward currently. You can see the lines just dropping ever so gently now until we actually should get our encounter. We should get our encounter. Maybe we need to boost forwards a bit more. Let's do that. Warp round, I say warp round, just spin round to our progress position and keep burning. And we get our lathe encounter. There we go. I need to get better timings on these videos. Seriously need to get better timings. So yeah, we have our lathe encounter. Re walking back in the footsteps of our predecessor Harv a few months ago. Was it months ago? Can't have been. Weeks ago, surely. But yeah, and we just want to bring it up so we can do some arrow breaking on lathe. So, as I've said, it would be a lot more fuel efficient if we'd got a lathe encounter to start with, but this thing has a lot of fuel. The It's pushing... The, the craft to get a pilot here to land on lathe, it's pushing that landing stage that we built a while ago in those videos. Uh, it's pushing that all the way to lathe onto the surface and that has enough fuel to get back into orbit. Not quite enough to rendezvous in dual orbit, as we discovered. But anyway, we've swapped, we've swapped out of the ship. But the point I'm trying to make is that the return stage for our our return ship actually has the exact or almost the same amount of fuel as the landing stage does, except it's being used by nuclear engines, so or a nuclear engine. So it's way more efficient and it's making use of all that fuel. Because I think somebody said, and I think I've done it once as well, two tanks of fuel and a single nuclear engine is enough to take you anywhere uh, if you're in already in Kerbin orbit. Because really, getting out of Kerbin atmosphere is the hardest part. This is why G uh, EVE is going to be such an agonising mission for me, I can just imagine it now. It's going to take a while, <laughs> because EVE is it has a higher gravity, and it has more atmosphere than Kerbin. So imagine trying to get into Kerbin orbit, and carrying enough fuel to get another, to another planet, and carrying enough fuel to land back on Kerbin, and carrying enough fuel to get back into Kerbin orbit, and carrying enough fuel to get home. Except that we'd obviously shouldn't send a rescue ship to actually get us home. Anyway, returning to the video, we have our landing vessel. Now we could just land immediately. We've got our lathe encounter. We could just decrease our peri app so that we skim and we get slowed down and we land. The problem with lathe is that there's so much sea. There really is a lot of ocean there. Um, if you look at it now, we can just see lots of islands and not an awful lot of land. Certainly no continents or anything that we would class as a continent here on Earth. But uh, just warping round, a bit of sneaky editing there, you may have noticed. And we're going to first off adjust our inclination, which is easy enough. We are heading northward, so we burn eastward. Pretty, uh, <laughs> we're heading north, let's burn east! Yeah, yeah don't, don't do that, don't do that. That, um, that doesn't work as well as burning south does. But of course our stage has just run out then, so we can decouple that and use the lander con to continue, which is a bit of a worrying prospect, seeing as we're using the lander to continue. <laughs> you know, the lander to do orbital operations? Yeah, I think we should land now, uh, whilst we still have enough fuel. So we're going to just we're changing our inclination slightly. Now, we could land on this bit of land over here. But I don't think we will. Right over in the corner. I think we're going to land on this big patch here. It takes more fuel, but uh, it's actually it's actually going to take long uh, less fuel in the long term because we have the atmosphere slowing us down. So yeah, I think you get what I mean. Anyway, we're actually bringing down our trajectory so it is directly underneath the orbit of this other ship, which should make rendezvousing easier, significantly easier, in fact. And here we, here we are, with the lander going down onto these sand dunes. Pretty big sand dunes as well. Uh, landing on flat ground is hard on lathe. Let's put it that way. Just to do some comparisons between this mission and our previous lathe mission, we have about half as much fuel now. That's not true. We probably have two-thirds of the fuel. But we have less fuel uh, to land and return to orbit. And... We are nearly on the ground. 
I don't know where that point was going, forgive me. Nearly on the ground, we found a reasonably flat part with some rocks. So let's just touch it down gently. Or bounce a little. That both work, you know. And we can do some EVAs. EVAing. We could do that. Or we could just leave immediately. So after a bit of time warping, uh, we blast off from the surface. Still, the video is at, uh, it's actually at two times speed now, I think. I think we switched back to two times speed a while ago, actually, but never mind. Just burning at 270 degrees, that stage runs out, and we continue with the orbital engine. And I think we've got our trajectory nearly perfect. We're trying to avoid getting... Oh, flashback all the planets. Trying to avoid getting into an orbit. Now, right now, I probably should have got out and burnt burnt hell for leather. Or maybe not. Because although we're close, we're actually travelling at very different speeds. So I'm increasing my speed now, trying to match its orbit. And although we did actually get to the correct altitude at the correct time, we still have to adjust our inclination first. And we have to play a bit of cat and mouse. So we actually need to be in a lower orbit than it, seeing as it is ahead of us. So let's burn retrograde to do that. Great, now we can just warp around. Getting to getting closer, getting closer. Just a lot of warping. <laughs> I might take this opportunity to talk a little about Infinity Ink Gaming, because the next video I post shall not actually be on this channel. For those of you who want me to do Let's Plays, it's a content that I've always wanted to do, but it's never got me very many views. So basically, I'm entering into a sort of par partnership with this channel, Infinity Ink Gaming. There's an annotation on the screen right now. And it's me and a load of other YouTube or just video creators in general. I actually did a live stream with AIMDK a while ago. Um, we did a Kerbal Space Program live stream. He's on there. He's making videos. And we're just doing Let's Plays of loads of different games. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you want to watch some Let's Plays from the Inept Hav, then uh, you can go over to that channel and watch one. The first one I'll be uploading, which I should record immediately after this, will actually be Payday the Heist. And if it gets enough positive reviews, then I might well continue to do Payday the Heist. But anyway, we've got out of our capsule and we're using the jetpack just to get over to our return vessel. Look, we have three tanks of fuel. Plenty. Three tanks of fuel. Plenty to return us home. Except for the fact that we've actually used most of that fuel already. No, it's a lie. We've used a bit of it getting us into this orbit. But anyway, there we go. Lembry and Bill Kerman successfully in the same ship. This is indeed very very good thing for us we're on our way to getting ourselves home hopefully <laughs> hopefully we can successfully get ourselves home so the first thing to do is to get out of lathe orbit because a we can't time warp in lathe orbit and b i'm not entirely sure where i should be burning in order to return home so let's just get into a dual orbit easily done and we can actually burn retrograde a little. I feel quite confident with fuel at this point. Which well, could be quite foreboding, my confidence. But no, actually, I'm feeling pretty damn good about the fuel we've got. So, burning into a lower orbit so that we can take advantage of uh, our increased speed in order to return home quicker. And also, mainly, a very, very good reason for getting into a low orbit. Ooh, spinning. <laughs> a very good reason for getting into low dual orbit is that we don't encounter any of the moons because we get thrown out and thrown back in and thrown out and eventually hit one of them or just get ejected from Jules uh, sphere of influence which isn't particularly good especially when it's not in the correct direction look at that nav ball, ooh god look at that ship <laughs> anyway warping ground I, I'm utterly guesstimating this just to let you know this took a lot of retries because I have no idea where Kerman is, ought to be I really don't. I tried looking on a transfer calculator, and it told me it should be 45 degrees behind us, which I'm prepared to believe it, certainly. But when I tried that, I came nowhere close to being it, so... I don't know. Actually, we have an encounter with Tylo, which is quite beneficial, because it puts us into a lower orbit, uh, a lower periaps, which means we are actually being more efficient as we burn. You can probably see now that... Well, especially now that I've put a uh, time acceleration in. 
but it's being much quicker about accelerating us, which is good. It's an effect we can take advantage of. Now you may notice we don't have an encounter. That's not surprising, really. Compared to Jewel, Kerbin has an extremely low sphere of influence, very, very small sphere of influence. And unfortunately, it takes a lot of time to get home. So we can actually skip through all that, and we have here our Kerbin Periapsis. It took a long time to get me there. <laughs> and also, you may like to have a look at my fuel level, it's ridiculously low. I can't show you right now because past me isn't showing you, um, but I can talk about it. The fuel is ridiculously low, we have hardly any. In fact, we have enough just to burn just to burn enough to maybe bring our periaps down into Kerbin's atmosphere. Maybe. 9 million meters, 8 million, 7 million, 6 million meters, 5 million meters, and let's stop it there. Get a bit closer, I think. Or not. You know, 3 million, 2 million, 1 million, 900, 800, 900,000. Let's burn upwards, roughly, and this way a bit. 500, 400, 300, 200... 239, we have an inch, not even an inch, we have literally like a milliliter of fuel left on our fuel reading. Let's get a bit closer so we know where we're burning confidently. I should probably have got a bit, I should probably have actually just carried on burning then actually. It would have been more efficient, but you know, I'm kind of panicking at the moment. Go on, 262, let's burn retrograde. 240, 230, 220, etc. 215. We're not in the atmosphere yet, and we can't afford to waste any fuel, Harvey. Any fuel at all. Oh my god, we have so little left. 100, 90, 80, 70. In the atmosphere! And 42. Which is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. We have no fuel left. We've downed our periaps to 42. And that's it. Uh, unfortunately, the recording broke at this point. Nearly this point, is it? Yeah, so basically, the recording's about to break, and we're actually not going to be able to see the rest of our mission. But we're in the atmosphere, we are slowing down enough to close to an end, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, the video. So, I just want to go back over some of the things I've said, in case anybody has missed it. I am going to be posting videos, Let's Plays videos. Uh, Let's Plays videos? What? Let's play a video, yeah. Um, I'm going to be posting Let's Plays on Infinity Inc. Gaming, which is a YouTube channel which me and loads of other creators are posting videos onto. I'm probably going to be posting maybe only once a week, because obviously my priority is you guys and the Kerbal Space Program. Uh, the first video I'll be posting is probably, almost certainly, a Payday Let's Play. Payday the Heist, that is, which is... A good game, it has its flaws, but it's fun less. So, if you like, you can go and watch that. Yes, information about the channel. If you want to submit a test pilot ship. Test pilot is a video, is a series in which I take ships that a viewer submitted, try them out, and hopefully improve them somewhat in my own image. If you want to submit a, a ship for that, you need to send me a personal message. Or, alternatively, you can send an email to hockgaming at live.co.uk. That's an email that I'll be using temporarily until I perhaps get a halve at Infinity Inc. Gaming uh, email or something like that. But um, if you want to submit a test pilot ship, then you need to go to those two locations. And finally, I am hoping to be doing lots more videos in the future and stuff. That's enough of me talking. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, then you can indeed like the video. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.